Hello and welcome to another Tuesday afternoon tea with Mother Tracy. I am seated here in our sanctuary with my cup of jasmine tea and I've got a few minutes to spend with you today and that's going to be enough because we are talking about setting what we have before God even when it's not enough or when it's not perfect and trusting that God will use it. Um, and I'm contrasting that with those themes that we were talking about last week of how we allow our imagination to limit God. And also this cultural trend that you see of discontent, of never enough and never satisfied. Some of you may know that I am a huge musical theater fan and I love to sing along with musicals. And recently, in the past couple years, we've had some really big ballads that have been right there in my range that I love. And one of the ones that I love the song, but I hate the message, is the song Never Enough by The Greatest Showman. And unless you've been living under a rock, you have heard this song. Maybe only someone singing it off key, but never enough, never, never, never enough. You know, that, that ballad that is just, that there's never enough for me. And so, and that actually leads to the downfall of this character because she grasps at something that she can't have. Um, because she will never be satisfied. And speaking of never satisfied, there's also that song from Hamilton, the uh, never satisfied. You're like me. I've never been satisfied. I will never be satisfied. And that really gets him into trouble. That lack of satisfaction and contentment uh, really shoots a lot of his political pans in the foot, at least in Lin-Manuel Miranda's telling. And that gets at the heart of a problem I see in many of our Christian leaders and in our churches, and maybe even you struggle with this, and that is the reluctance to start a task or the reluctance to complete a task because it's not enough. It's not satisfying. It's not perfect. Uh, we, can, we just know that other people could do it better than we can or what we have, the time we have, the talents we have, the skills, are not going to cut it. And that is a scarcity mentality that stands in the way of so much work for the kingdom of God. Imagine how the story of feeding the 5,000 would have turned out differently if a little boy hadn't volunteered his lunch. If Andrew hadn't said, hey... Here's five loaves and two fish. I mean, if we don't start with what we've got, we're not going to get very far. And it's easy to think, oh, well, that's Jesus. Of course, he could start with something so small and magnify it. But I'm not Jesus. That's true. I'm not. You're not. Thank God. But we bear Christ's image and his name into the world. That is our mission, the Great Commission. And so I think one of the ways that we can move beyond that letting our imagination limit God is to stay rooted in the promises of Scripture. And so we're going to take you back. Not to Jesus, but to 2 Kings chapter 4 with Elisha. Because they're faced with a problem greater than their resources. There's a famine. People are starving. And we're talking to Elisha, a prophet, and his servant. No Jesus involved here. A man brings what he has to Elisha. A sack of grain and 20 loaves of bread. These are not your Walmart 20 ounce loaves of bread. These are your little rolls, individual portion. And so he brings it to Elisha and Elisha says to his servant, take it and set it before the people so they can be fed. And the servant goes, what? 
All right, the translation doesn't actually say what. It says, the servant worried. How can I? How can I set this before a hundred people? And Elisha doesn't get angry. And the servant doesn't get told, well, do it anyway because I said so, and we'll make it turn out okay. The servant gets reassured, and here's where Christian leaders should take note. Out of the promises of God, Elisha turns to his servant and repeats the instructions. Give it to the people so they can eat. For this is what the Lord says. Everyone will eat, and there will even be some left over. And when they gave it to the people, there was plenty for all and some left over, just as the Lord had promised. When we are tempted to think we're not enough, or what we have is not enough, or the things we have to offer will never satisfy or please God, we would do well to respond as Elisha did and remain rooted in the promises of God. And so in case you don't know where to turn for some of those promises, we, we've got a list. We have them paper clipped into our altar book here at Church the Messiah so that we can offer these as a blessing, a remembrance, rooting the going forth back into the world and the promises that God has that he's got this and what he's given us is enough. And so these are just a few of them. Psalm 20 verses one through four, may the Lord answer you in his day of trouble and send you help from his holy place. May he give you strength, remember all your offerings, grant you your heart's desire and prosper all your plans. Romans 15, verse 13. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him, so that you may overflow with hope through the power of the Holy Spirit. 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 3 to 4. May the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of compassion and the God of all comfort, Comfort you in all your trouble so that you may comfort others with the comfort you have received from God. And a personal favorite of mine from Philippians chapter 1 verse 6. May the God who has begun a good work in you carry it on to completion until the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now there's more. Because of course there are an abundant list of the promises of God for his people. Now, there are those who would say, well, those were for other people. And those you can't take those verses out of context. Yes, those verses were intended for an audience in a place and a time. But who's to say that audience and that place and that time was not meant for just such an occasion as this as well? God has an abundant amount of resources. He has everything. And yet, he chooses to work through you and me and our flawed institutions to be the hands and feet of Christ at work in the world. So when we're tempted to dissatisfaction, when we are tempted to fear and scarcity and never enough mentality. Don't let that stop you from starting the work God has for you. And certainly don't keep it inside as a fear that I'll never complete this or it will never be enough because God will work in and through and for you and with you and will equip you along the way. In our perfectionist society that values virtuosos and values superstars but mocks people who make mistakes and are just starting out, it's hard to find the courage to set ourselves out there, to begin a new thing that maybe we don't feel really qualified to do, or to 
partner with a mission or a ministry that we don't feel like we have a lot to offer. But I promise you this, God has promised to carry on the good work he has begun in you and see it through to completion. So that means we may go through seasons where it doesn't feel like we're enough or what we have isn't very satisfying. That doesn't mean giving up and it doesn't mean that we weren't called to do something and it doesn't mean it's okay to quit. It means it's time to root ourselves back in the promises of scripture. Crack open your Bible and get grounded in the faith that God can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. And so that is my hope and prayer for you today, that if there is something that you have been feeling like, I'd like to do that one day, but you know, I don't really have time or I'm not really the person to do that, or I'm not good enough. Get out of the way. Start. Begin. Let it be imperfect, but let it be begun. Because Christ wants to begin a good work in you. In the meantime, May the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit guard your body, save your soul, and bring you safe into that everlasting kingdom where he lives and reigns forever and ever. May you be satisfied with the abundant gifts of God. Amen.